But before I install that, I'm going to clean that seat down in there. Because basically what happens is when this is in the fully closed position, this area right here has to seat in there and that's what's that's what shuts off the fuel flow completely and then when you're operating one of these you never want to open this part way you want to open it all the way because the way it's designed is actually a second seating surface right here where my fingernails pointing what that does is when you fully open it that area right there if you can see it or not, will seat inside here. And that's actually, when it's in the fully on position, keeps the fuel from flowing out along this lever right here and leaking. Now, in my case, it was leaking pretty badly, but this nut was very, very loose. So at some point when I was reaching under there or whoever was reaching under there, you know, who knows how long it's been like that. When I went to unscrew this, this nut loosened. There is a packing inside there. The packing also seals the fuel from, uh, and keeps the fuel from flowing out along here. But the packing is almost a secondary uh, uh, sealing uh, surface. Your main primary seal is this, this uh, seating right here, uh, like a valve seat. So what I want to do is I want to make sure this is clean before I put this all together and then I'm gonna take care of the packing inside this nut which I'll get to that in a minute. Got a small bristle soft brass brush attachment for my Dremel tool and I'm going to use that to clean down in there. Okay so now I've cleaned that up down there and I also ran it down this opening right here just to make sure there wasn't any uh, corrosion in there and uh, I think that's going to be okay. So now I'm going to deal with the packing. So normally what you do is you'd want to completely unscrew this packing nut like so and slide the packing nut off and what that would let you do is that would let you completely remove the old packing and then install new packing which uh, some guys use an o-ring so you could find the properly sized o-ring that would you know stretch over this uh, OD of this shaft right here and fit in there and uh, that might work perfectly fine for a lot of applications. The problem I have here is I can't take this nut off because the fact that's got almost a 90 degree bend in it. So unless I want to try and straighten out this brass piece which I mean that's a whole headache I'm certainly not going to get involved in. If I try and just straighten it up by force it's probably going to crack and break off and then it'll be junk. Or I could heat it up and then, you know, soften the brass and then straighten it. But I mean, let's not get crazy now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my best to see if I can fish out the old packing that's in there. And if I can't, then I'm going to try and install the new packing without taking the nut off at all. So now you see I've closed this up. So I've got this nut in my hand closed all the way up against the uh, seated area there and I move the nut back as far as I can and you can actually see that packing down inside there. It actually looks almost like a uh, flat rubber gasket. So again, I can't really get another rubber gasket or seal like that or an o-ring to put in there unless I was able to take this nut all the way off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the type of packing that comes in a cording that you wrap around the shaft and then you slide the nut back in place. It's the same kind of packing that they use for faucet valves and old faucets. Um, so if you've got like a, you know, a, a spigot on the outside of your house actually still uses that kind of packing. Oh, here we go, okay, right here. So here's, this is a boiler drain valve actually, but right here you take that nut off and there's a packing inside there. So if this were to be leaking along the shaft right here, water, you would loosen this nut all the way and you could actually wrap this packing material around there and then retighten the nut and uh, it should stop the leak. So that's what I'm going to use here. So the question is, what do you use? Well, some guys actually have used Teflon tape, and you uh, take the tape and you twist the tape into a tight cord. So you basically take the flat tape and you twist it until it gets into a cord, and you wrap that around there and uh, do something like that. You know, a lot of guys, big controversy uh, as usual, 
every time you know you try and get information everybody's got a different opinion you try and go with the consensus so i'll give you an example some guys say you can't use teflon and then some guys say well use you can use teflon but use the yellow teflon because it's for gas and then another guy will chime in and say no 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 when they mean gas they mean it's good for natural gas piping but then if you look at the package on a lot of them it actually says petroleum so they're talking about gasoline but then it also says natural gas. So you could use the yellow tape. Uh, a lot of guys say they use the white tape and they have, don't have any problem. I think part of the problem that Teflon tape gets a bad rap when used in a, uh, in a situation where it's exposed to gas is because so much of what's commonly called Teflon tape or plumber's tape um, on the market today isn't pure Teflon. It's not the good stuff like it used to be. I mean, especially if you go to like, you know, if you're like your flea market or one of these discount stores and they've just got a bin with a whole bunch of rolls of tape in there and, you know, it's 50 cents a roll and you're thinking, wow, what a great deal. I mean, lots of times what you're buying is you're buying white plastic, uh, plastic tape that may not even have any Teflon in it or has like just a little bit of Teflon in it. I mean, what you want is you want the real Teflon tape, the, the, the I believe... The designation should be uh, PTFE, but don't quote me on that. I might be wrong on that. Uh, the, the point is, you kind of know when you're getting the cheap stuff versus the good stuff. And then, uh, like on threads, you can also use, um, there's a paste, a Teflon paste. Same thing with that paste, though. You're going to make sure you get the type of paste that is uh, going to be okay in contact with gas. So like here's a uh, paste that I've used. Uh, this is Loctite brand thread sealant with PTFE. So this has got the real uh, Teflon component to it. It's not the uh, not the other stuff. Now there is a uh, brand of uh, thread sealant uh, that Loctite and I think some other manufacturers might also uh, have a version that uh, specifically says it's for use on. Um, in uh, gas in direct contact with gasoline so uh, you can get that stuff I think Napa has one you can buy um, and I think they call it uh, well, I can't remember the name of it but I mean it will even um, be able to withstand direct contact with jet fuel the problem is it's pretty expensive for a small container it's uh, I forget how much it is but it's a little pricey so uh, what I tend to use on a situation like this for instance, these threads where it's going to thread back into the tank. I'll use this thread sealant with the PTFE. But what I tend to do is I tend to try and stay back off the first couple of threads. And uh, what that does for me is that minimizes the amount of the Teflon that's going to actually go up and be in direct contact with the fuel sitting on the inside of the tank. That uh, brings up another valid point. Don't forget, uh, this is a diesel engine here, so I'm actually dealing with diesel in direct contact, not gasoline. So um, I may be just uh, overthinking this whole thing as far as ethanol goes, but I just thought I'd mention it because you might be working on something with a sediment bowl uh, that you know is going to be in a gas tank. So the next thing uh, is, you know, what do you use for packing? Well, again, looking online various forums people discussing what they've used over the years you know um you know like i said the teflon tape twining it up into a, a cord you can also buy a teflon cording for packing valve stems um but the majority of the people said that they've had really good luck with the graphite based cording used for uh plumbing and here you go, right here. This was about four dollars and change um, for this large package. That's quite a bit of cording in there. We'll get it out in a minute. And take a look at what it looks like. Right next to it, on the hook, right over from it, was one little, maybe like a four or five inch long strand of Teflon for the same price. Again, you know what? If it's gonna work as well, or if it's gonna work well enough for our purposes. Why would I spend all that money on the Teflon when I could buy the graphite? So let's take a look at what we got. 
So this looks like it's a big, thick cord, um, which wouldn't make much sense for our little application here. But if you look closely, it's actually in a strand. So it's almost braided together. So you can decide how many strands you want to keep braided together. So like if you were doing the packing on a big, um, you know, big shut off, like a big, uh, maybe like a, a two inch gate valve or something like that, then uh, you could keep it as this thickness. But what we're going to do is we're going to unravel a little strand. We're also going to keep that original packing that's in there because it's going to be too hard to get that out anyways. I'd have to fish it out and then cut it off. And then there'd be no uh, gasket or anything in there. It would just solely be the packing that it was relying on. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this, uh, this material right in the front of it. And so when we tighten it down, I think we're going to get a good seal. So now I've just untwined one strand from that. So you can see this is how thin this stuff ends up being. This cording material that it's based on is pretty tough. So it's probably almost like a hemp. And uh, it's uh, hemp that's in, impregnated with... Uh, with uh, graphite. Oops. So I've wrapped a little bit around there and now I'm going to use a uh, small like a dental pick style to push it down into the uh, nut. Alright, so how tight do you want that nut? Well, you want it tight enough so that you can feel some resistance uh, when you're turning it and that way you know you're getting some good compression on the packing. But you obviously don't want it so tight that it's hard to turn, too hard to turn this lever because then you run the risk of uh, this whole thing wanting to unscrew and uh, unscrew it. Alright, now another spot where it can leak is where these threads screw into the actual housing lid. So on these threads, we're going to put a little bit of thread seal. Now on these threads, we don't bother putting any thread seal because that's not the ceiling surface. The ceiling surface is happening between shaft of the actual leather here and the uh, inside as opposed to uh, here where the actual ceiling surface is in place with these threads. Alright, so now I've got it reassembled and I've got it in a fully closed position and then if you uh, just clean it up and you dare put your mouth on it, you can blow into it hard and if you get any uh, noise indicating that your nose leaking, uh, you get a check and see if it's coming through the valve and that means your seat's not seating properly. And if uh, it's coming through the window around here, then you know that uh, you're um, packing. Although in the fully closed position, uh, really it has to be leaking past the seat before that chance to be Now I'm going to install my screen, and then the uh, cork gasket will actually hold the screen. Alright, and now we'll put the uh, bowl and the uh, bowl and the thing on it back on. Clean the bowl out, of course you want to uh, expect it for the cracks, and the chips, and the chips are left on the top of the Mix this. Well, I just took a gander underneath the magnifying glass, and uh, it says heat resistant. <laughs> so that's not the manufacturer. And there was a diamond with an eye in the middle of it. And on this casting, there is a diamond with an eye in the middle of it. So, not sure what that would be. Who would uh, be the manufacturer there, but maybe somebody else knows. I don't think it's international. So, I was just curious, but uh, it's uh, beyond the scope of my knowledge. Alright, so that's back together. As far as tightening, tightening this up, you'll notice that it's got these uh, nubs on here, so it's easy to grab your fingers and tighten with your fingers. Um, finger tight should suffice, and if you can't get the stop looping from the finger tight, then you get something else from it. You need a crack in the glass, or you've got a, a crack in the uh, casting, or you've got to get that gasket, or some foreign material that's stuck in there. The point is, you don't want to over tighten this. Okay, let's use the uh, more aggressive video to clean up this aluminum part of the uh, that can stick up into the pan. And the purpose of this is actually uh, my 74 or 74 D
settled to one. That's a good one. All right, well, now I got this together, but we got a nor'easter that came through and dumped a bunch of snow, and it's now changed to rain, and it's still currently raining. So let's see if it's not raining too hard. Ah, it's just a light sprinkle. We can live with that. Got to talk fast because it's getting dark, or it is dark. I got the Teflon paste on the threads and I've got it tightened in. I'm going to put some fuel in it and let it sit overnight. 